Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a driving a racing game in Unity and welcome to episode 11. So this time we're going to look at creating uh, some extra lines of code which will help us save our best lap time rather than overwrite it each time. It'll check to see if it is the actual best time. Now to do this we'll do something called a second count and what that's going to be is the game kind of makes its own timing system which won't be visible anywhere else in the game, just only in the back scenes. So to do that what we need to do is go to our lap time manager script right here. And we're gonna to need to add in another variable. So this particular variable is gonna be the same as uh, what we already one we already have, which is going to be um, same as here, the milli count. So you can see the milli count is based on time.delta time. So we're gonna do something similar. So what we'll do is we'll have public static and Let's call it uh, a float and we'll have, let's call it raw time. So this number itself is going to be a number which um, is going to calculate same as time to delta time but not multiply by 10. So it needs to be raw time plus equals time dot delta time semicolon and save the script. So as you can see here in the background, it's going to add to the raw time as well as the milli count. So to go further than this now, we need to go to our lap complete script. And inside this lap complete script, this is where a few more lines of code need adding because in here, we need to add in another variable, which is also going to be raw time. So public float raw time and notice this one isn't static the reason this one is static is because we need to reference it from the lap complete script so what we need to do here is after that in on void trigger enter we'll need to add an extra line from our player prefs now we've already dealt with player prefs so i'm not going to go into too much detail about that but we need to make raw time equal to player prefs dot get float remember that's a capital F on the float and in brackets and quotes we're going to call it something here so we're going to set it later on but we'll call it something here now and we'll just use raw time again we'll keep everything consistent semicolon so now what we need to do is we need an if statement to check if the time that we have just set is actually better than the time currently saved so if and in brackets lap time manager dot raw time is less than or equal to raw time so it's saying basically if the raw time variable in lap time manager is less than or equal to the raw time variable in this script then we do the following so close bracket and open curly bracket and what we want to do is all this setting the best time so we want to perform all of this. So after milli display, we need to close curly bracket. All that's done now is says, if it isn't our best time, we can skip all this, set our integers, set our floats, and then reset everything and carry on as normal. So to avoid all this now, we need to actually reset our raw time as well as write our raw time. So player prefs dot set float and in brackets and quotes raw time comma lap time manager dot raw time close bracket semicolon so that's setting it and the last thing we need to do is reset it afterwards so much in the same way we've already done with the minute second and milli count under there lap time manager dot um it's called raw time equals zero semicolon and save now the first time we run this script you may need to complete a lap first because this is a new player pref that we're setting now i've already got a player pref set for raw time obviously i have to test these tutorials before i can actually uh, record them so i already have a best time set and we'll have a look at that now so head back to unity 
We'll just check. There's no errors there. That's all good. Let's press play. And you can see my current best time is 16.9 seconds. Now to test this entire script is working to save our best time, we should be able to cross the finish line after 16.9 seconds, so we'll go a little bit slower. And it will not overwrite. So previously, before this tutorial, it would overwrite anything at all. So come around the corner, we're well over 16.9 seconds, and it doesn't overwrite. So what we'll do is we'll try, providing my driving skills have gotten better, to beat 16.9 seconds. So here we are, we should beat it. And we do, 16.8. So you can see it's actually overwritten that just fine. So that's exactly what we want. So I'm not going to carry on, but as you can see, the script is now working. So if we would have gotten, if I hadn't crashed there, if I'd have gone around a bit quicker, it would have saved the best time. If I'd have carried on after a crash, it wouldn't have saved. So the way this raw time is working, it, well, let me go to the actual lap complete trigger. We can see here raw time is also there. So if we complete a lap, we'll bring over a raw time. And what this raw time is, is calculating, it's just adding each second and millisecond together. So although the lap time may be, let's say, one minute, five seconds, the raw time will actually say 65 seconds. So it's a way of calculating what the best time is without adding together the minutes, seconds and milliseconds. So we've got that out of the way. And I'm quite happy with how that works, because it works flawlessly now, and it'll work on any track. Last episode, we set in a lap counter. So let's go to our canvas, and let's pan the camera around. And let's focus on our laps here. So if we double click on uh, best label, sorry, not best label, we want the lap label, don't we? Which one is it actually? I forgot what we called it. A lap panel, of course. It helps if I remember these things usually. So lap panel, and we have lap label, lap count. What we'll do is we will duplicate lap count, hold control, press D, and we'll call this lap requirement. So we're not going to do too much with this in this episode. It's just a visualization thing right now. It's something we'll do in the next tutorial. So the lap requirement, let's move over here. And we'll say a lap requirement of, let's have three laps. So tell you what we'll do, we'll put a slash and a three there, and then we'll move it here. So we can see we've done lap zero of three, one of three. So we're preparing ourselves for the next episode, as I say. And what I want to quickly do before we finish this tutorial is have a quick look at the Asset Store. Now, I'm pretty sure some of you guys probably have had a look at the Asset Store already. There's tons of great stuff on there. But what we're going to look at is the Skybox. So at the moment, it's just blue. It looks all right, but it's not perfect. So I'm going to double click on Mark 1 just to get ourselves back onto the track down here. And let's get to the Asset Store. So you can get the Asset Store by either holding Control and pressing number 9 on the keyboard or going to Window, and in the middle here we've got Asset Store. It'll open up this little window here, it'll connect. Now the Asset Store is a mecca of fantastic assets that you can download for use in your game, and there's so much to find. But what we need to do, or specifically what we're looking for right now, is a Skybox. So let's go up here and search for Skybox. Hit Enter. Now obviously we're trying to do everything for as cheaply as possible, so let's hit free only. And there's a lot of skyboxes that you can choose from. You've got skybox here, you've got a fancy type skybox, you've got 2D type skyboxes. You can choose anything which would suit your game as best as possible. I've gone for this classic skybox, so if we click it, and then this button here will either say import or download. So we just click on that, and it basically downloads the asset for us, imports it, and it's all good. Once we have that, right click and close tab, so we close the asset store. And as you can see, I have it here in classic skybox. Now to set a skybox, we need to go to window, lighting and settings. And at the very top, you'll see that's where we can set the skybox. There's plenty of other settings. I'm not going to deal with many of these in this tutorial because some things like fog is something we'll deal with at a later date for more atmospheric type races. But as I say, we'll get into that another time.
So skybox material, all we need to do is click the little radius button here and we can select it from a list. So theoretically, you can have a lot of different things as a skybox. As you can see, you can select different things and it changes how everything looks here. So let's have one of these sky, uh, let's have sky 09. So we can see we actually have clouds there now and you can change the time of day if you would want to. It's different ways of having it. But what you have to remember is when you select a skybox, it does have an effect on the lighting in the scene. So let's select sky 10, close little X there. And we have source skybox. You can keep this as skybox, you can have it as a gradient, which you will see changes here. And if you set these colors, it also changes how the scene looks and you can have a standard color. So if we select the ambient color, so white, we can see that it increases the visibility in the scene. If we have it darker, you can see it gives a bit more of an atmospheric look. This also works in correspondence with any lighting you have in the scene itself. So for now, at least at a beginner level, I would either set it as a lighter color or have it as the actual skybox itself. It keeps things a little more consistent. So you could always change the direction of light or rather turn it off and you would see it looks a little bit different once again. Or if you want to keep the direction of light on, you could always change the intensity to be quite low, so 0.1. So I would recommend playing around with the skybox to see what best suits your game. You can probably see at this point, the game looks quite different of how it did at the beginning of this tutorial. And most of that is all down to the skybox, but at least it gives a bit more realisation to the skybox itself. So let, I'm going to increase the uh, directional light to 1 again. And as I say, it's all down to how you want your game to look. It's not something I could teach you to make your game look how you want it. It's something you've got in your mind. But I would recommend playing around as much as you can with different settings. If you wanted nighttime view, you would go to lighting, settings, and especially for the skybox pack I've selected, you can go to sky 15. And already you can see that skybox has had an impact and it creates a darker look to the game itself. But what you have to remember is it's also affected by the directional light. So if you turn off that directional light, it becomes much darker. But you're also you're always going to need light in a scene to make it look somewhat decent. So I'm going to set that back to sky 10. Keep it a skybox. You can also increase the lighting using the intensity multiplier on skybox. Generally it's nice to have it about one but it's worth playing around with to see what kind of settings you can come up with. So guys, we'll leave that tutorial there. It's all down to you now to set how you want. Next episode, we will create a script to end the race after three laps if we've already put in our UI. So we'll add in another camera to perform a finishing sequence cutscene and we'll touch up a few other things. And we'll also give our environment a little more motion to make it seem maybe slightly more realistic, uh, maybe the skybox and a couple of other things. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.